even though this is an SLVR1000 that I'm working on, the same thing applies to all the Sonys that use the same chassis. So the R5, the 555, the 757, the 686, all those Sonys that use this chassis can have this problem. And I'll show you what's going on. This is a Sony SLV R1000. This one's working, but the complaint on it is after it runs for about 45 minutes or so, it shuts down. So I'm gonna load an EP tape in and let it run. And we'll see if it shuts down. So this might take a while, but uh, apparently it's working fine. It just stops. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess before I even try this unit that the fault is the um, The capstan bearing might be starting to rub, but uh, we'll have to let it run and see. What happened on a lot of these is the bearing would bend, and it would start to cause the rotor to make contact with the stator, and would cause it to stick. And it was more apparent in the slow speed than in the, the faster speed, but I'm guessing. Don't know if that's what it is yet. Uh, all we can do is let it run. It's going to take a while to act up, but other than that, the machine is working. So this one could be an interesting one, being it's an intermittent problem. Well, this machine that's supposed to stop after 45 minutes has not stopped. Three hours and 25 minutes later, two movies have played through. And it's still playing, so I'll let it continue to play see if I can find the fault on this unit. So far, nothing. Well, it went through the whole entire six hour tape and rewound, and now I'm starting it again for the second play. But this machine hasn't acted up. I've wasted all day on this thing, hoping it would fault, but nope, it's working. Okay, after playing this six hour tape through, this is the third time it started to fault. You can see it, what it's doing. Is it the bearing? Well, we can find out. Let me just pull it back this way towards me. It might be dragging. Let's see what happens. If we watch the picture, you'll see that it is. Now. There it is, it's the bearing. It's, the bearing is uh, failing. It's hot too. This is actually quite warm. Let me get my infrared camera. We'll measure the temperature. This is noticeably warm. So here's the what we're looking at. You can see how warm that is. Let's push it back a bit. This way and it stops. It stops freezing up. So what happens on these machines is the pressure from the pinch roller constantly pressing up against the bearing housing causes it to bend ever so slightly and what will happen is um, the rotor will start to make contact with the uh, the stator which is what I suspected although it took forever for it to act up so I'm gonna grab the the metal and I'm gonna bend it back a bit towards me to compensate for the uh, the bent housing. Just to give it a bit of a tug like that. And then we'll put the pinch roller back on. Put the cap back on here. And uh, then it will be tested some more extensively. I'll run this tape through it several more times before uh, I'm happy that it's fixed. This has been one that I say it, it, it uh, came in with a complaint that it was doing this but it, it didn't do it I ran this tape through a couple times and this was the third pass so this tape is now almost at the end it was it played for like almost six hours before it started acting up 
and this fault usually happens in the SLP speed as opposed to the SP speed just because the motor rotation is slower so I'm going to leave it for the night because this has been running all night I'll, I'll test it again tomorrow and uh, we'll run it through a six hour run again tomorrow and see what happens but uh, as of now of course it's, it's now not doing it the problem is kind of resolved right now it's not faulting like it was this is a this is a Jeannie Michelle jar concert that I've had for years on tape so I'm having to talk over it so that the music doesn't pull a, uh, a strike but uh, anyway um, uh, we'll rewind this tape and we'll test it again this was quite the this was quite the show that I've got here on tape on a super VHS tape that I recorded a long long time ago anyway um, we'll test this again tomorrow and uh, verify that everything's good but I think that's it's, it, that that's what goes wrong with all these machines the ones that have the brass colored top were really bad this was the replacement stronger bearing but as you can see it acts up too and they get quite warm and it's just from the, the friction and so forth the, the reason it's getting hot is because the the motor's been dragging against the uh, rotor the rotor's been dragging against the the actual stator assembly here's another thing with these Sony's if you put it into high-speed rewind they unlace the tape which was nice I like that about the, the Sony VHS machines they had a high-speed rewind function that would unlace the tape so that you weren't running up extra hours and extra tension on the tape and extra wear and tear on the tape and the the uh, head drum to rewind that was a feature that uh, Sony had now when they get close to the beginning of the tape they lace the tape up and then go back at a much slower speed as the tape gets back to the beginning nice or something? so kill the sound here while I'm talking so the unit uh, has now been running I've run the tape through it this is a six hour tape I've run this tape now through it twice this is the third pass I'm two hours and 56 minutes in and no issues it's been playing fine so say the first couple passes I didn't notice it acting up but then I wasn't sitting watching it for the entire time I was just spot checking it but I did see it on the third one which was what I suspected what's going to be the problem the bearing now what happens on these and I've covered this on other machines before initially on the SLV 555 and the 757 and a few of the other earlier ones this portion of the, the bearing cap was brass colored and what we found happening on a lot of them was the pressure created by the pinch roller here the spring constant pressure pushing back on the capstan bearing caused it to slightly warp in the back which caused the rotor below to start making physical contact with the motor I'll show you a motor from one of these machines so this is an actual motor assembly this is out of an SLV or, um, or sorry an SLV 555 this is the original one that I was talking about that has the brass colored top and what happens is this piece bends because the metal was too thin from the constant pressure of the pinch roller which is pushing up against it like that it causes this to slightly warp and when it does what happens is the rotor which is on below it here makes contact with the coil pack as it's now riding closer now this one I don't know whether it's failed or not we can find out if I pull it apart do we see any rubbing any indication that it's been rubbing you see there was a replacement part available for this from Sony and it was actually the bearing housing here it's held on with three screws we could buy this bearing housing and change it to the improved style which had the silver colored top 
and if we look at the the back piece here you'll see that it is beefier I'll show it to you on this one you see how thin this support is I'll show you the other one but uh, it was supposed to prevent this from happening but it didn't So put the motor back together we put the to put these clips back on and bring that one back on like that that was what we did to repair these units this motor here is probably functional although that cap there has probably got to go on it because that would have been a weak spot on this but anyway that's a that's a functional motor other than the unknown which is that cap if we look back at the machine that we're working on today. If we look at how thick the back metal supports are on this one compared to this other one, you can see how thin these ones were by comparison. Right there. See how thin that is? Now we look at this other one. So that was the fix that was supposed to prevent this from happening again, which is to make the metal supports here thicker. And you can see how thin they are. And how thick they are there. That was supposed to stop this problem from happening. Did it? No, it didn't. It delayed it from happening, but it still happens. So even the new ones eventually would require what I just did. Put the pliers on there and bend it back. Take the pinch roller off, get the pliers on there and bend the thing back forward. Grab it and pull it back forward. So we're bending either bending this part straight or bending the chassis slightly to straighten this up which then restores the clearance between the rotor and the stator because what's happening is it starts to rub and as it starts to rub especially at the slower speeds as it drags of course this causes the chip to get hotter and when the chip gets hot it starts to lose efficiency and lose power and then eventually what happens is as it rotates every time it makes a rotation it'll touch and also the um, the rotor itself might not be perfectly straight as well right as it's spinning so you get a high spot that it will touch and it will stop it momentarily and then you get what we were getting on this one before straightening it up so that's how you fix these units it's a semi-permanent fix because eventually it's going to bend again just like it did originally it's going to eventually bend again with a lot of use it's something that you really have to do from time to time but once it's done it's generally good for a while originally Sony had replacement bearing housing assemblies available but they haven't been available for years and this is the newer type and it does fail it just doesn't fail as fast as the other one these other ones here you straighten one of these ones out and you're doing it every couple of years because it's so thin uh, it would fail like when they were new they were failing after a couple of years so they came out with this one which is a lot more reliable but still as we saw happen on this one as I demonstrated when I just pushed it when I pulled it back uh, this way when I pulled it back it stopped the skipping see now I can put my finger on it and it won't it won't freeze up it's fine Anyway, that's what goes wrong with these ones. You get a Sony VCR that was freezing momentarily like I demonstrated after it started acting up. That's the fix to fix it. And if you do it, it should be good for a long time. So another thing I'm going to do on this unit while I'm working on it is I'm going to lubricate the, um, the bearing. We're going to pull the motor, or not pull the motor, but pull the bottom off it. So I can pull the rotor and lubricate the bearing, top and bottom just as a good measure because it's here. So to do that I need to pop the front panel so I can expose the screws to remove the chassis. I can remove the front loader, the four screws for the front loader. This is the similar procedure to changing the blue gear.
lift out the front basket. Pull that out of the way. I've got the, the uh, I think there's three screws to hold down the chassis. And of course we have to remove the plugs. So those three screws unplug the head. There's two more screws back here. These two plugs need to be unplugged. And the chassis now should lift up. I'm going to take all these little catches. I think I got all the screws up. Once we have the chassis out, I'm going to turn it over. We need to remove the screws that hold the circuit board in place. This unit looks like it's got a lot of hours on this belt. They start out orange. This one here looks like it's had a lot of hours on it. It's quite uh, dirty. So remove the screws for the circuit board. Five of them. Then remove the board. Unplug the drum motor. We need to get to the the, the uh, rotor. We need to take the rotor off. So we'll remove the belt. Remove this one screw here. This way I can pull the rotor. I don't have to pull the motor out. I can just pop the rotor down at this point. So I'm going to pull the rotor down. I'm not going to remove it completely. I'm just going to pull the rotor enough so that I can lubricate the bearings. So we'll pull the rotor down. And now I can lubricate the bearings. I can get some oil into this top bearing up here and we'll get some oil into the, uh, the bottom bearing. I will remove the, or remove the pinch roller just to make this a little bit easier. So to do that, I'm gonna remove this screw, remove the pinch roller retainer, remove the pinch roller, and then put the retainer back on. The reason I'm doing that is so that the, the gears don't get out of time. I just want a little bit easier access to the bearing housing itself so that I can put some oil into it. So we'll slide down the, the rotor again so that I can get some oil down into the bearing. So I get my electric motor oil. We're going to put some oil right down into the bearing. Put some oil onto the capstan shaft down here.
once we've got the capstan assembly back into the bearing housing, just make sure to clean off the capstan itself, just to make sure there's no oil that may have migrated onto the capstan. The, the uh, retaining washers will keep the oil in the bearings and a very small amount is all that I put on. But one drop is all that it needs. The oil will get retained in the stintered bearing housing and each side will retain it inside the bearing itself. So we're just going to clean to make sure that there's no residue oil. Let it dry. I noticed that these weren't spinning very well either so we can we can probably apply a drop of oil onto the tape stabilizers. Let's just pop off like that. So we just put a little bit of oil down inside here. And to do that I'm just going to put some onto the end of a small screwdriver. Use that to get the oil down where it needs to go. Just the smallest amount so we can get it right down inside the bearing here. Do the same for the other tape stabilizer on this side. Same on this one, pop the top off. So that I can put the smallest amount of oil well, right in there. Okay, that should take care of this. Now I can start to reassemble. Again, reinstall the capstan, uh, or sorry, reinstall the pinch roller. Hold the gear in place so that nothing pops apart, so you don't lose your timing. Drop the 
pimp drawer back in place and then put the retaining cap back on. That holds everything in place. And then the screw Time to mount the chassis back in the, or mount the mechanism back in the, the chassis. Chassis just sits in place. basket back in. Front panel back on and then we'll test it and again I'll be testing this extensively. I'll be running this thing probably for few more days just to make sure that everything's good after adjusting and lubricating the caps and bearing and that just pops on like that plugs in down here so the machine's all back together mm -hmm. I got some tapes here I'm gonna play it's just stuff that was Recorded off TV years ago. Good old movie. Tape is all beat up full of dropouts. Anyway, we're gonna let this, uh, I don't even know what's on this tape. Probably about all I can show you guys. I'd probably pull a copyright hit for just showing that. Anyway, um,. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to have this thing play. I got several tapes to play through it. We're going to run this thing for some more. Make sure that uh, it's in good shape before sending it back because I don't need to see it back yet again. Anyway, now you know what goes wrong with these. The pressure from the pinch roller can bend the housing, cause it to start rubbing against the stator, which causes the motor to overheat. Also, the bearings can get dry, so we've taken care of that. We've lubricated the bearing top and bottom and pulled this back into position. So that should prevent future problems, at least for a while. This machine is used by a company that does a lot of archiving, so it does have tons and tons and tons of hours on it. So um, I'm going to close this off now while I test the, test the machine before sending it back. But now you know what to do on any of these Sony VHS chassis. This is a an R1000, but it appears it, it applies to the R5, the 555, uh, 66 six, or, or 757, 686. All the Sony's that use this type of chassis, this was their first generation VHS chassis that was used on many machines that Sony made before they started farming them out. This was Sony's chassis, and say so the, the problem is we have this issue on a lot of them. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.